My name is Larie Daniel Favors. I'm the general counsel at the Center for Law and Social Justice, and we are just wrapping up our first installment of the Black Wealth Matters Building a Financial Legacy series, uh, which is a series we're hosting here from January through April, where we'll be exploring different aspects of the economy within the black community. One of the solutions that came out of the discussion was a recognition that we often don't have access to the same financial resources that other communities do, be it bank loans, be it business investment opportunities, but we do have access to organic, um, organically grown financial exchange programs that we often bring from the places that we immigrated from and bring here with us. Um, and so that included things like SUSUs, micro lending, and other forms of organic, uh, I, I almost like to say grassroots financing, that really takes us outside of the realm of needing a bank loan and allows us to pool resources in a way that recognizes our kinship networks and in a way that allows us to really maximize um, some of the collective assets that we have in a way that may not be recognized by the broader economy. And it's important to recognize that any Anything that we do is an outgrowth of the history that precedes us. We're all historical products, so the things that happened in the past impact us today. One of those things that came up in the discussion this after this evening um, was this continuing legacy of slavery and the way that lingering senses of inferiority, infighting, um, and other forms of distrust really do plague our community and manifest in ways that they don't in others, which is to be expected when you understand the legacy of, his, of slavery and the way that we were intentionally pit against each other. Acknowledging that, we can now I recognize that that is an issue and then incorporate needing to plan around that within our economic planning. So if you know you come from a community or a family or a home group um, that may have infighting, that may have challenges, but you do want to find ways of pooling your capital, sitting down with an attorney and outlining your goals as a group so that attorney can help you drop a family contract, can help you drop documentation that says this is how you participate in this family venture and if you decide later on you no longer want to participate, this is how you can exit from that family venture without disrupting the family, tearing apart relationships and causing pain and sorrow for the next generation. So really recognizing a marriage between organic organizing within our community and then using the tools that exist within our professional class to help us cement that. Again, one of the things that we talked about this evening was the fact that in other communities you have a dollar that is able to circulate numerous times before it has to leave that community. So in a community that is self-sufficient economically, if I am hired by someone from my community, he or she is paying me and then I can go to the store and buy my food from someone who's in my community. I can go and pay my rent to a landlord or pay my bank loan uh, to a bank that is owned by people in my community. I can raise my children up in public schools and then provide educational uh, experiences for them that will supplement for them and teach them in the values that my community holds dear and really use those types of tools and, and to bounce and circulate that money. For us, as soon as I get paid, nine times out of ten, I'm not being employed by a black person, so my money isn't even coming from within the black community. If I want to buy diapers, if I want to buy shoes, if I want to buy nail polish, if I want to eat something besides soul food, it can be hard to access a black source for that product and so we really do need to think beyond um, the home-based businesses and, and use that as a base to really go out into professionalizing and mass duplicating some of the financial successes that we can create. Center for Law and Social Justice, we are a racial justice legal center, 30 years old, based here at McGrevers College, which is a part of the CUNY system. You can visit our website, clsj.org, and follow us online uh, at Twitter or Instagram, clsj underscore mec. I want to say what's up to all all the ancestors and the elders who were laying the foundation for economic sustainability and who knew that we would need to own our own economy before we knew what economies were.